Thanks for listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos and the PCC Multiverse. Check out more great podcasts today on one of these awesome affiliate networks. You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. The Tangibound Network. Check it out. Tangiboundnetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. A proud member of the Gunna Geek Network. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other geeky podcasts over at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in 3, 2, 1. On this week's episode, is there a future for The Walking Dead? Can a crackdown be coming soon? And will Fallout 76 take the series to new heights? All this and more as we once again delve into the pop culture cosmos. Welcome to the pop culture cosmos. And we're back with another episode of the pop culture cosmos. This is Gerald Glassford from Pop Culture Cosmos and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. But it wouldn't be a pop culture cosmos without the man himself. It is our version of Commander Shepard when it comes to Humanica Media. you got to catch everything that he's doing out there on HumanicaMedia.com, Humanican Media on Facebook, YouTube, and so much more, including our site, PopCultureCosmos.com. It is my good friend. It is Josh Peterson. All right, man. A busy, busy weekend in pop culture. We've got a lot to cover, but I definitely want to hear you say hello, my friend. Hello. Yeah, I was ready to to rapid fire something, and then you cut me off there. So, I'm sorry. Hello. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, rapid fire, my friend. No, it's all good, dude. the The moment's gone. You know, just fluttered away in the wind. Gone with the wind is a. Uh... I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. all good. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. All right, hey, let's do this. Let's talk some pop culture. Let's do this, man. What do we got today? Well, first off, I want to make sure everybody knows that we are still going to be doing a charity event on December 15th at Retro City Games in Las Vegas. All those charity proceeds, if it's canned food, it's going to be going to Three Square in Las Vegas. If you want to go ahead and donate toys, that's going to go to the UMC Children's Hospital. If you've got dollars to donate, that's going to go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We're planning a huge charity game night at Retro City Games. Yes, so we got Hyper Schmidt and Trudai coming by to uh, bless your ears with their musical talent. So if you're in the area and you're a fan, definitely come by. We would love to have you be a part of our events and play some games, hear some music. It'll be a good time for all. And of course, also, we're going to have an- other special performances as well from Vedivs. He's going to be doing some heavy metal covers of some famous video game theme music out there. That's also going to be part of the show. We're hoping Plasma Z can come as well. Plus, there's going to be Fortnite, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Tournaments all going on. They're going to be overseen by our good friends at Mario Party Wars, Go Brothers Gaming, and Game Source. They're all going to go ahead and take care of those tournaments there. Miracle Fruit Oil with Vitabrace is going to get involved. Just so many other great things going on. It is, once again, a charity game night at Retro City Games on December 15th. Stay tuned to the Retro City Games Facebook page for more. But it is going to be a great show today. We've got a lot to cover when it comes to the world of pop culture. We're going to be talking about the new Disney Channel. What's it called and what's it going to be about? Some great new things have been added to it as well for the future in 2019 when it opens up. Also, the impending death of Prima Games, a standout as far as the video game guides, a a staple of the video game community. That's unfortunate as far as that news is concerned. Also, Microsoft had their XO18 conference this weekend. They made some announcements. We're going to tell you about that as well. Destiny 2 has been in the news, but not for the best of reasons. Activision has been sending some signals when it comes to the future of the Destiny series. Fallout 76 comes out in the middle of this week, so we're going to talk about that as well. And on the back end, we're also going to be talking about the rise of Rocket League. The World Championships took place this past weekend here in Las Vegas. We're going to talk all the great things about it, why it's so fun, and why it's such a great success story. Plus, Daphne Matthew from 
Talking the Dead and the Walking Dead fan base, Facebook groups. She's going to stop by to talk about the Walking Dead universe, what happened in the famous Rick Grimes episode last week. We're going to talk about that and where it leads to as far as an expanding Walking Dead universe and the future for the Walking Dead. We're going to be talking about that and so much more. Plus, also Tyler Baker from the Fantasy Football Pedro podcast. He's going to quickly cover some things that he saw in week 10 of the NFL. But my friend, are you ready to cover some really hot topics going on? Because we've got a lot to cover. It's going to be a rapid fire situation on the front part of our program. Let's do this. Let's do this indeed. And let's start off with the big win for the Grinch at the box office this weekend. Domestically, it hit about $65, $66 million at the box office. Your thoughts on the Grinch winning the box office, and do you think this is just a sign that it's going to be one of the biggest hits of the holiday season because this is a movie that should have some legs going forward throughout the rest of the year? You're more into the box office numbers than I am, but I think it's a good sign. You know, we're talking about Christmas movies. We haven't seen one in a long time. There hasn't been a, a, a good one in a long time, one that you can take families to go see. So good for them. And also, like I saw Benedict Cumberbatch, the Grinch is attached to these uh, auto insurance commercials, I think. And I'm surprised as the crap out of me that he's doing that. But I mean, good for him. So, and, it, and also Ebates as well. Ebates, yeah. So, if anything, like excellent marketing. That's universal, right? Made that. Yeah, that's crazy good marketing. So, I'm, you know, I'm glad to see it succeeding and I hope more people go to see it. Benedict Cumberbatch deserves it. And it's a good, it's a decent story. It's supposed to be a prequel, right? If I was reading that correctly. I believe that's correct. The reviews on it have not been strong. They're saying that really didn't bring much to the Grinch type uh, atmosphere or the, or anything as far as the, the ambiance and the mystique of the Grinch. It really didn't add much to it overall, but it's a family movie that uh, a lot of families can go to. The kids can go see. They can really enjoy. And it has the pedigree of Illumination Entertainment, which has been on such a roll with The Secret Life of Pets, Lorax. Well, don't forget all the Despicable Me's and the Minions and all that. Those movies have really made it successful for a movie like this to go out and do very well in its own right. So I'm looking forward to a, a, actually it becoming a pretty good hit over the holiday season. I think it'll do very well. I think it'll last a long time as far as stay out there in the presence of mind, you know, even with a lot of other movies that are coming out. And you're right. They have done a pretty good job of marketing it. That's good to see that The Grinch is going to become another holiday staple for everyone out there to go ahead and see. It looks like something that's going to be another good movie that's going to perform well over the Christmas period. My friend, did you get a chance to check out what's going on with Disney? They finally officially made the announcement on their streaming service. It's officially called Disney Plus, which is not too much of a surprise considering the fact that one of the companies that they own, ESPN, has a similar deal with ESPN Plus. So it seems like a natural that Disney Plus was the actual name that they're going to go with. And they added not only of the Loki series that's coming, but also Diego Luna, who is famous for his work with Star Wars Rogue One, now is going to reprise his role from Star Wars Rogue One into a series of its own. Your thoughts on how they're actually shaping up with Disney Plus? Do you think it's going to be something really special the moment it debuts in 2019? Not a very original name, Disney Plus. Uh, just it's not. No, it's not original, but it's something that they're already doing with ESPN, and I'm sure they're going to be doing it with all their other networks that they own as far as bringing that all that in into a sort of like a plus situation so no it's not the not the greatest of names I, I agree with you on that but then again we shouldn't really be expecting originality from disney because they are literally the uh royalty when it comes to not having original thoughts so they love to play it safe <laughs> clearly honestly like the Rogue One is was weird to me because not a lot of people are fans of going backwards. You know, like with Harry Potter, it's different because you're getting a completely different timeline. But this one, we already saw those characters die. And while I'm fascinated to see what they would do with that, I don't have any interest in seeing because I already saw his story close. So I don't really have much desire to see how it begins, you know. It, and the thing is, like, yeah, it's going to be successful. The Disney streaming service, of course, is going to be successful because, look, you have these are basically like I'm I'm seeing these, these series being like big production style shows, you know, and so it's going to have all the like the oomph of a movie 
but it's just going to be in shorter form. And, you know, back to Rogue One for a minute, it is the fact that, like, without Gareth Edwards behind the wheel, like, what's that going to look like? Because what made Rogue One so good was that it's so dark and gritty. So, uh, you know, we'll see if they recapture the magic, but with Marvel and Star Wars shows, and then how long, you know, they decide to remake or give us an Indiana Jones prequel or side story or something like that. So they got a lot of power behind them, and I predict it's going to be very successful, unfortunately. Well, they already tried that with young Indiana Jones back in the day. So I don't know if they're going to go ahead and, and reach out for it again. But you never know. They're going to try and reach into as many assets as they can to try and accentuate Disney Plus and bring in viewers away from Netflix, CBS All Access, Hulu. They're going to try and bring them away from those streaming services. And so far, they announced that their joint ventures are going to be with, obviously, Star Wars, Marvel, the one that struck to me, but they also put an asterisk on it that was pending the Fox sale and all that was National Geographic, which kind of was something that they were promoting, which kind of stuck out there. It was like they said Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, and then, and yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden, National Geographic, when that popped up on the screen as far as what's going on for an advertisement for Disney Plus, I thought that was kind of out of the norm, out of the box, but also something that could be very interesting and a key part of that Disney Plus streaming service. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, there's a lot of surprises going on here. At the end of the day, I think most of it's going to be fairly successful just because it is Disney and Disney is a powerhouse. Disney has all of these names under its belt and whether or not the shows are good, people are still going to go back to them, if that makes sense. It does. And I'll tell you what, Disney Plus is going to be looking stronger and stronger as they continue to fortify everything they're going to be showing off in their streaming service, all the shows, all the series coming to that. Obviously, the Star Wars series has already been mentioned. Loki, Winter Soldier, Falcon, Scarlet Witch, all those names have been mentioned as far as tying into a, their own series on that streaming service or mini series or, or abbreviated episodes or whatever they're going to be doing or whatever they're going to be planning for that. So it's very interesting to see what they're offering with Disney Plus to try and lure in those viewers away from Netflix and all those other streaming services. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Don't touch that dial. Wait, do, do people still use dials? Looking for an edge the next time you take on your favorite video game? Then check out Vitabrace High Performance Gamer Wristbands. Packed with the power of fruit seed oil, Vitabrace is clinically proven to help improve performance, giving you a better gaming experience. Head to MiracleFruitOil.com and use the promo code MEDIA10 to get $10 off your Vitabrace purchase. Whether you're looking to beat the time on your latest speedrun or are fighting your way to the top on your favorite multiplayer or battle royale, Vitabrace can help you reach your gaming goals. Buy Vitabrace today at MiracleFruitOil.com. That's MiracleFruitOil.com. Vitabrace. Win with it. My friend, when it comes to video games, we're going to be doing more rapid fire here. Destiny 2 recently has been making the rounds as far as being a free game on both consoles and now for a limited time on PC. On the surface, that seems great, but the reason why was because they were debuting some massive DLC in the Forsaken DLC that was coming out. It was also admitted by Activision higher-ups that the game, since its debut in 2017, has not performed up to their expectations, which is kind of sad to see where Bungie, the original makers of the Halo series, has evolved into because they were so proud of Destiny. There was so much hype for it. Everything was going to be uh, on the Cloud9 for it, but both Destiny and now Destiny 2 have not really performed up to those high-level expectations. Your thoughts on Destiny 2's disappointing sales? Why has there been a disconnect as far as the game is concerned with audiences? And do you think the making it free and being dependent on the expanded DLC is the way to go for the future for this Destiny franchise, if you see it continuing at all? Well, Destiny, uh, if you ever read uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels by Jason Schreier, like Destiny just getting off the ground was ridiculously hard, and it had so many issues as far as voice acting goes, storytelling, the whole controversy with Marty O'Donnell being fired. Like It had a lot, and people were assaulting it on Twitter relentlessly when it first came out. And then 
you know, it kind of had its rise and falls over the years, but they already had like they had a, a deadline to, to meet for Destiny 2, which was almost I want to say what a year and a half after Destiny 1 went out. So it you can't really like get a quality game in that amount of time because you're basically just reusing old skins, old designs, old code. It came out to mediocre reviews. People didn't like it, and there was not good fan feedback. One of the expansions fans thought was okay, but yeah, it, it just what. And the funny thing is, like, this is making me look at a game like Anthem coming out. You know how it's all a multiplayer community type thing with a with story on it, and it, it's kind of making me wonder: is is this model going to work? This is a model that a lot of people are trying to put into practice. Is it going to work? What's it going to be like? Is the fall of destiny the kind of the uh, showing that it's not the good idea that everyone thought it was that people don't want that kind of gameplay? Because I know more people play the multiplayer modes of that than they do the story and all that stuff. So as for like giving it away for free, like they're in their death throes. And yeah, it is sad to see the developers of Halo. But I mean, I'm wondering now if this game is it's had so much bad publicity and the it's already had that turnaround where the fans like, okay, we'll give it another chance. And then they blew it. So I'm not seeing a good turnaround for this, if that makes sense. The moment a game goes to being free is kind of the the moment where they're lighting the, the funeral pyre in hopes that a rain's going to come and put those flames out eventually. It does look like a desperate move as far as from a distance when you're viewing it, that it seems like very much so it's going to be something that a lot of people are questioning the future for the franchise when you're going to a free game already so soon after you wanted to make it a big budget AAA type of title. I played some of it when it became a free option and, and I thought myself, I see why. It's got a lot of traits from previous Halos, but it doesn't have the connection that a lot of people do like myself to the Halo series, I guess, because there's no real attractive characters to connect to. There's no Master Chief telling that story, that narrative that you really want to guide yourself through. It just is not compelling in any way, shape, or form. The mechanics are there that we've all seen and done before when it comes to the Halo series, and it just doesn't seem to bring anything new to the table. I know people that, like you said, are into the multiplayer and the raids and all that, but once they're done with the raids, they move on to something else, and I can see why destiny 2 as of this point has underwhelmed both audiences and also critics as well so i'm just at this point hopeful that bungie will get its act together and be able to produce something long term for destiny otherwise it's going to be a disappointment across the board for bungie activision and the whole destiny series if they have to move into a different direction speaking of video games staying on the topic my friend microsoft x018 this weekend a couple of things I wanted to talk about most importantly was a major acquisition of two companies, one you're very familiar with, and also one that also could bring out some great games as well in the future. In Exile Entertainment was purchased by Microsoft. They made that announcement. But Obsidian Entertainment, makers of several games that a lot of gamers out there are very familiar with, including Fallout New Vegas, Pillars of Eternity, Dungeon Siege, Alpha Protocol, and more. They were acquired by Microsoft. This was one of the biggest and most well-known freelancing development companies out there that wanted to stay independent for a long time, worked with several publishers, including Bethesda and so many others. But now it looks like they've gone ahead, whatever is money troubles, because that's been highly rumored after a couple of the games that they produced on their own were really did not make it very well financially. So your thoughts on Microsoft doing what I think you've asked before in making sure that going forward that more development means more games, which means better things for the fans of Xbox going forward. Obsidian's a weird one because they had prided themselves on not working directly with publishers anymore because they did not have the freedom to do what they wanted, the deadlines. They're tired of always having someone looking over their shoulder to see what they were doing. So they ended up, they were one of the first developers to get into crowdfunding. And that was for Pillars of Eternity too. But it makes sense because at the end of the day, like it almost, you know, if you look at their 
selection of games here like it makes sense you know and it reaches a high with fallout new vegas and starts to slowly go not in terms of quality because dungeon siege 3 was very critically lauded but as far as sales which of you and i both know is the most important thing because they wanted to go off and stay off on their own it started to fall off with sales and as you and i know if they're not being able to pay back on the dollar like they did when they were making money hand over fist with fallout new vegas you gotta go you gotta go to reach out to new friends and that new friend is now microsoft yeah yeah and they were already like the stick of truth was something that they were developing when they were like on their deathbed so it makes sense that microsoft would pick them up because microsoft was the one that you know usually published their games anyways so Good for them. I'm glad to see them still around. I, I hope that you know some of their more obscure RPGs maybe might find new life on the Xbox. But I want to ask you this. Do you think that Microsoft, I, I'm hoping they're laser focused on giving exclusive content to Xbox, but how much of that do you think is them buying up the market so Sony doesn't get it? That's a good question. I think that is a definite possibility, especially with both the new Xbox and the PlayStation 5 coming around the corner. Getting a quality developer of games like we were talking about, Pillars of Eternity, South Park, The Stick of Truth, Fallout New Vegas, Dungeon Siege 3, such as Obsidian, and also In Exile Entertainment with their list of games that they've made before. Getting two quality developers like that shows to me that they are serious about banking towards the future and providing what so many people out there including you and i have talked about is providing more first party games from a microsoft standpoint because we see what playstation does they're not hesitating to go ahead and bring out so many different first party games they're not hesitant to go ahead and buy or get involved with developers out there that will produce games that will hit the playstation they're not hesitant in doing that, and it looks like more and more that Xbox is finally learning from the lessons from being number two or number three in each console generation. So it looks like they're learning from that and going ahead and trying to atone for their mistakes from the past and trying to build themselves a better future, especially with the new Xbox coming around the corner. Also, at Microsoft X018, Crackdown 3 it's coming in February 2019, my friend. Was that a little surprising when they announced Crackdown 3? It's actually got a definite date in February of 2019. Honestly, like everyone was expecting them to tell a release date at Xbox, and they had been putting it off for so long. The game had been postponed so many times. Like if it didn't come out in early 2019 and we went to another E3 without seeing this game, it would have lost some of the fan base, it would have lost interest because. You know, we're approaching the end of this console cycle and people are expecting certain things. And if Crackdown were to have dragged into the next cycle of consoles, I don't think it would have done so well. I agree with you. And it looks like for now they saved Grace by going ahead and announcing Crackdown 3. It's got that cartoony look, the cell shaded look. It still looks pretty good. The destruction at a high level is there, which is the hallmark of the actual game series. So if you're into a whole lot of destruction, check out the video today. That's Crackdown 3, which is coming as a game to Xbox One in February of 2019. This week, my friend, is a lot of stuff going on in pop culture when it comes to video game and movie releases. There's a couple things going on later in the week that we're going to be talking about on our Friday PCC Multiverse. But one thing we can say that's going to be releasing between this show and that show is is the release of Fallout 76. I know everybody's been throwing their opinions all around during the course of the betas that have been available for Fallout 76 pre-order customers. Your thoughts on Fallout 76 as it hits stores, is this going to be able to continue the successful line of Fallout games, or do you think that the mediocre reviews, the concept that it's a multiplayer centric game and not a single player straightforward narrative is going to hamper the success for the fallout series going forward so i got my hands on the beta for a little bit and i did 
kind of notice that it does not feel like Fallout. You know, this is not your average Fallout. It's not your Fallout 3 or your Fallout 4. Like in Fallout 3 and 4, you spend a lot of time in the vault, you know, kind of getting getting used to the gameplay, learning how to do things. And this one, it literally, you walk outside, like you wake up after a party and you're all drunk and then you go outside and that's it. Like there's no intro really to play through. So you just go out there and it's cool in the aspect that you know, you're in a Fallout universe and you see all these other players running around, you know, you can stop and chat with them if you want to or or not. But the biggest issue here is that the game feels slow. You know, there's a lot out there, and but it feels slow and not very well inhabited. And granted, I know it takes place a different point on the timeline, but it needs more stuff. I didn't play with friends, so maybe I need to, to try that when it comes out. But I, it's just not something I'm going to be diving into quickly here. And it looks like something that a lot of people are going to be interested in, but not sure if they're going to stay with it. I will give credit, Bethesda is reaching out on its marketing campaign to a lot of different places and different venues that it wouldn't normally go ahead and pitch a video game or a video game company or publisher would normally pitch their own video game. So Fallout 76 at least is going to get a fair chance when it comes to being promoted out there. I'm going to tell you that right now, in my opinion. The beta was like a, what, almost a three, four week commercial for the game. Uh, All your progress is going to be transferred over to the game and that's good and all that. But it looks like so far that Fallout 76 is going to be doing okay, but I don't think it's going to reach the heights of the previous Fallout series, both critically and from an audience perspective, which is kind of disappointing because Bethesda has had a long line of good, solid success stories And going forward, they need to go ahead and refocus their attempts on a positive future when it comes to the Fallout series. And also, will it be the Elder Scrolls series next year? We'll have to wait and see. Last but not least, unfortunately, we also heard that Prima Games, which has been making strategy guides for almost 30 years, they gave the death knell, my friend, and they're going out of business Your thoughts on the impending death of Prima Games. I'm actually looking right now as we are speaking at my Oblivion Prima Games Guide and thinking some fond thoughts at that massive book and thinking I couldn't have got through as much as I did on my original playthrough of Oblivion without my book from Prima Games. We all have excellent memories of Prima Games, Prima Strategy Guides. Those were the... Like Mass Effect, every Mass Effect game, every Final Fantasy game, I always had a Prima strategy guide because what was nice about it is they had all the maps laid out, all the spots where you can find things. But with the advent of the Internet, I think that their closing down has become an inevitability for a long time because you can go online now. You have whole departments within these these big media outlets that are dedicated to game facts. You know, you have your IGNs, your polygons, Kotaku's like, that's actually how people get jobs. You know, you write these game facts and then that's how a lot of people have gotten noticed who work for these outlets. So it it was more of of an inevitability, but yeah, I do remember the days, you know, you'd pre-order the game and they'd ask you if you want to pre-order the strategy guide, do you want the strategy guide? And you would always want to buy it. Or if you bought the game on release day, you could get the strategy guide for like five bucks off or something. That was fun, man. I, I always... I always liked having those and it totally beat printing up like three to 400 pages of Final Fantasy guide off the internet. It was easier just to have a book. It just goes to show you too. It's not going to just gonna be strat guides that goes out of business. I, I think magazines are going to go and maybe books soon one day too. And I hate to say that, but yeah, dude, the internet's just kind of made life miserable for a lot of people who were always good to us growing up. That is definitely the case. And uh, just some fond memories of going through those big, huge detailed strategy guides Obviously, the cooperation that they had with those game publishers and developers in order to make such massive books that would be ready and available as soon as you picked up the game. Those days are going to be going bye-bye very soon as Prima Games, the standout in the video game marketplace when it comes to strategy guides, is going to be no longer very soon. And my hopes are that all those individuals involved will be able to go ahead and find work that will go ahead and be able to satisfy them as much as their work with Prima Games. If you have any questions out there, or if you'd like to go ahead and share us your thoughts on what was going on with the Grinch this weekend, did you get a chance to see it? What about Overlord and the Girl in the Spider's Web? Did you get a chance to catch any of those movies out? 
What about your thoughts with Disney Plus? Are you really getting excited to go ahead and get the streaming service? Destiny 2, are you one of those that have been disappointed with what's gone on with Destiny 2? Are you ready to get that game now and, and check out what's going on in that world and maybe even buy some DLC? Let us know on that. Fallout 76, what are your thoughts as it's coming out this week? Do you really want to go ahead and get that game? Are you excited for it? What about the announcements at Microsoft? Microsoft XO18 buying Obsidian and In Exile. Do you think those are two big maneuvers for the future going forward? And do you think Crackdown 3 is going to be everything that you want it to be? Share us your thoughts on any or all of these subjects at popculturecosmos at yahoo.com. Also as well, Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanica Media, and Game Starts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Woo, my friend, we covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time. Truly appreciate everyone out there listening to us. This is the Pop Culture Cosmos. Rob McCallum Films is back with a vengeance. The power of Grayskull, the definitive history of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, which chronicles the ultimate 80s billion dollar franchise, Masters of the Universe. See exclusive interviews and hear untold stories from the people responsible for creating the world of Eternia, a place full of magic and science, and learn about the craft of creating action figures and animation. Power of Grace Cult is just one of our many projects at Rob McCallum Films. And we're back with the show. This is Gerald Glassford from Pop Culture Cosmos and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there from the Fantasy Football Pater Podcast Facebook group. It is my good friend until this weekend because <laughs> our friendship is no more after <laughs> our game. Because he beat me again. We can be friends on Monday, though. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes. After the Monday Night Football game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is Tyler Baker. Another great weekend in the NFL, my friend. A lot of good things going on. It's just so great to have you aboard once again. Oh, man, it's good to be here. Yeah, this week has seen some high-scoring games. You've got Pittsburgh dropping 52. You've got New Orleans dropping 51. A lot of good fantasy performances out there. A couple of injuries. Cooper Cup banged his knee up. Sean McVay said it doesn't look good, but we don't know exactly what's going on there. Marvin Jones a little banged up. Not sure what the extent is there after they just traded Golden Tate. So it looks like Kenny Galladay is kind of the guy there. But other than those two injuries, a lot of good fantasy performances. It was an awesome week, my friend, in the NFL. Our full episodes are always available each and every week on the Pop Culture Cosmos channel on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and over 30 different podcast outlets. The Reds gets one. It was ugly, man. They are so bad on offense, but their defense shut down a Tampa Bay offense that can move the ball. Let me ask you this. Fitzpatrick, 400 yards, yeah. two interceptions, but yeah. 400 yards, and they only put yeah. three points on the board. How can you do that? Well, they missed a couple of field goals, and there were a couple of drives, long drives, where they got down to the goal line. Josh Norman caught an interception in the end zone. So it's like they were getting right to the finish line, and we're either missing field goals or turning the ball over. And you have to give credit to the Redskins guys up front. They didn't get a whole lot of sacks, but they just disrupted that offense. And the guys in the secondary, very opportunistic. And HaHa ha Clinton Dix is starting to get into the groove of how they do things. The guys up front are dominant. A little slow at the linebacker position with Mason Foster. But that defense is good, and it's, and it's keeping Washington in games. And I don't understand how a team who can't score more than 21 points, how they keep winning football games, but they are. And I'm a Redskins fan, so I'm, I'm happy as a clam right now. Talk about a defense that bends but didn't break. That yes. was a perfect example of it against the Buccaneers. Yeah, yeah, it was. My friend, it's always great to have you on the show again each and every week right here on the Fantasy Football Pater Podcast. Again, you just got to check us out. And don't forget the Fantasy Football Pater Podcast Facebook group. Join it today. You can ask all the fantasy football questions you want, whether it's waiver wire pickups, trades, lineup changes, just anything out there concerning fantasy football. You either put it right out there on the group 
Or you can ask him directly, Tyler Baker of the Fantasy Football Vader Podcast. It's always great to have you on the show right here on the Pop Culture Cosmos. Nothing's better when grilling your favorite meal than adding some delicious Wheelie Q rubs, seasonings, and gluten-free barbecue sauce. Made with the finest ingredients, Wheelie Q products pack a ton of flavor to your meals, whether it's ribs, chicken, steak, hamburgers, fries, or vegetables. To get your hands on some of these tasty Wheelie Q items, Head on over to www.wheelieq.com and a portion of all profits made will go into finding a cure for spinal muscular atrophy. Pop Culture Cosmos listeners, act now and get 15% off your order just by entering the promo code POD1, that's P-O-D and the number one at checkout. For the tastiest food on the grill, nothing's better than Wheelie Q items today at wheelieq.com. And we're back with the show. This is once again Gerald Glassford from the Pop Culture Cosmos and Game Source. Well, last week was a great week if you were a Walking Dead fan because some major changes happened with the Walking Dead series. And who better to talk about it with me today than the head of Talking the Dead on Facebook. Go ahead, search it out. Talking the Dead 18 plus on Facebook. It is my good friend. Daphne Matthew. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Jeremy. How are you? Just excited to talk about The Walking Dead. I know I've been pestering you now for almost a week since the major news have happened. (laughs) I gotta talk to you. I gotta talk to you when it comes to The Walking Dead. But again, we're going to be talking some spoilers here. So if you haven't caught up yet and you still want to, especially with last week's episode, maybe you just want to just turn it down just for a few minutes. Here we go. Last weekend on The Walking Dead was the official, supposedly, last episode of Rick Grimes. And technically, they didn't say he was going to die. They pretty much found him out. If you know what went on with Rick Grimes, he fell off a horse, impaled himself with an oncoming stream of zombies. He got out of it had several dream sequences while he was letting out blood when he was close to death. He crossed a bridge, lured thousands, quote unquote, and I'm saying that, oh, <laughs> oh, hundreds. whatever CG will apply here. But he led all these zombies across the bridge, blew himself up and the bridge. And we all thought for a moment there that, well, until the commercial break happened, that, <laughs> he, was a, that he was a goner. Well, he is not a goner. He was found on the side of a river, still alive, still massively bleeding to death. And I'll have you take it over from here because it leads into a new universe for The Walking Dead. I'm thankful that they didn't pull a Glenn. Actually, in kind of a way, they actually kind of did and they did not. It's kind of a gray area from what they promised to what they said, to what they stated, to what they're going to do now. Your thoughts on all that's going on, but we'll leave the story over to you on exactly what's going to go on now with Rick Grimes. Well, I think you summed it up pretty well. They never did say Rick was going to die. Everything was leading to a Rick Grimes death, but it didn't actually happen. I'm happy it happened that way. Just because he didn't die, that doesn't leave the door open for his return. It has been confirmed, and I have had it confirmed by several sources that Andrew Lincoln will not return to The Walking Dead in any way, shape, or form. So he's going to do three Rick Grime-themed movies, but he is not returning to the show. He wanted to leave last year, but when the surprise came that Chandler Riggs was killed off, he felt that it would have been too much for the fans, so he decided to stay. And he was very firm about only being on the show for part of the season. So he committed to five. He did his five and he went out and I'll say it literally with a bang because once that bridge blew up, everybody thought he was dead. That episode was very strenuous in the fact that first of all, everything that was leading up to this episode was just so intense. And then 
every 10 minutes or five minutes. It was a commercial break. It was like, come on, let's just get on with the story. Let's just get on with the story. Just cut out the commercials. I thought it should have been a longer episode, but after looking at it, it was fitting. There's been a closure on a lot of things because if a lot of people don't know, they'll know from me now. That was all also Lauren Cohans who plays Maggie's last episode. She will not be returning to the show anytime in the near future. So that was two main characters we lost, but we actually saw Rick's departure and not Maggie. So I don't know how they're going to play that off, how they're going to explain her departure. If I was a showrunner on that show, I would have actually tried to have us stay one more episode to kind of like give her real closure because I would explain her departure more of an attack of conscience because the episode or maybe two episodes before when it was revealed that the Oceanside people were killing the saviors and one of the characters, Cindy, told her that she showed them the way. I think that really weighed a lot on her conscience personally and that that might have been if I was played off on that and given her a definite departure, but they kind of left it up in the air. I know last week was totally Rick. It was supposed to be totally Rick. I was shocked that he survived. And that's one of the few times I've ever been shocked in the nine years of looking at The Walking Dead was that they actually played it off that he survived. It was really, I think, fulfilling for the fans itself to know that he actually didn't die. I mean, they're still in denial about him coming back to the show, but he's not going to come back. He's firm about that. To add on to that, so we left... Rick Grimes, bleeding on the side of a river. He was actually not found by any one of the people he associated with and he cared for as far as his quote-unquote family that he was searching throughout the entire episode. He was actually found by Jadis, who you know is completely transformed from the time that most people were familiar with her character into something different. She's actually found him located him and actually communicated with the mysterious helicopter. And the last images you see of Rick Grimes on The Walking Dead is him being flown away in a helicopter to who knows where, to who knows what. The actual Walking Dead show then fast forwards six years later, and it now shows us new characters, including an older version of Rick Grimes' daughter, Judith that you see going ahead and killing some walkers. You can't say zombies. Can't Walk- say zombies. Can't say zombies. So we now have a situation where it flashes forward to six years later on the series. That also leaves room for whatever demise or whatever thing that they planned for Lori Cohen. So th- obviously there's a mystery there as far as what went on in those six years that has her character that's gone bye-bye. And it still leaves, like was mentioned by you, they announced that there's going to be a three movie set at least at the minimum for the walking dead. Those three movies, which were announced are going to include the Rick Grimes part of it and his storyline going forward in a new part of the walking dead universe, among other things that they're talking about doing that are upcoming for the walking dead universe. They still have a lot of plans. I ask you though, Ratings were mildly up for the Rick Grimes episode, obviously because they hyped it so much. And a lot of people like myself that were casual viewers, as I've told you before, I'm one of those in and outers that comes in (laughs) on the storyline and how good it is. A lot of people like me did tune in, but a lot of people like me are probably going to be tuning back out. Ratings overall for the season are down. And we talked about this the last time. They were down half of what they were at the peak already of The Walking Dead, and they're down even further overall outside of last week's episode. Your thought on expanding this universe even more when there's still trouble in the home front on the main episode as far as keeping that alive and fresh and trying to garner in new people for more ratings? I mean, last year, I think a lot of people tuned out because of the fact that there were major character deaths. I mean, they killed off Call Grimes Wicks. Um, a lot of people who watch the show are comic book readers. So a lot of people tuned out because of that. But now that I'm thinking about it and the 
Well, that I have had time to recover from that sudden death, as well as many of the other friends and talked amongst people in fan bases and at cons and walker stalkers and all that out there in the Walking Dead fan universe. This thing with the ratings is basically something that happens with any big show. I mean, this show has been on for, this is the ninth year it's been in existence. And people come and go, unfortunately. People that I know were diehard fans years ago stopped looking at it when Glenn got killed off. And that was now three seasons ago. So we have to take into consideration that now with the way that social media and the Internet is, is that people don't always look at it at the same time. We have people in other countries. They don't get to look at it until the next day. We have people that DVR it. We have people that are looking at football and will look at it later. They'll look at it at 11 o'clock as opposed to at 9 o'clock when it airs on the East Coast. We have people that live in California that don't see it until midnight. So, I mean, I personally am no longer that concerned about the ratings because there's just so many factors that go into how ratings are obtained. But I do admit that a lot of people that I know have tuned out over the years, especially last season. I mean, I think this season so far is great. I think that it somewhat takes me back to season four, which in my opinion was the best season ever. But four and five, I think Angela Kang is doing a wonderful job as the showrunner. I'm glad they gave Scott Gimple the boot upstairs and he's no longer involved with the day to day of the show or any of the decision making. He's like the talking head of The Walking Dead. He just sits there and talks. Um, <laughs> but as far as the story goes, I think it's gotten exponentially better. I think last year a lot of people were disappointed because they were promised in season seven that All Out War would not take a whole season. And it turned out it did. And I think a lot of that had to do with the decision to kill Carl. Andrew Lincoln even stated it himself. He was going to leave last year. And up until the episode where it was revealed that Carl was bit, which was the mid-season finale, it did give the appearance and the feeling that that was going to be Rick Grimes last season. But then they flipped it and they decided to take out call and spend the second half of season eight on the war, which wasn't promised. We were told that all out war was only going to be a half a season. There were some decisions made and a lot of fans were disappointed because they just felt that there was too much time spent on the war. The whisperers should have happened last year. And that's what's coming next. As far as The remainder of the last episode with Rick's departure, especially about Judith Grimes, I can finally say I'm resolved with um, and okay about Carl dying because the way they brought Judith in six years later, it's reminiscent of Carl's story from the comics when the Whisperers first came about. And she's now, because of the second time jump, at the exact age Carl Grimes would have been when the Whisperer story appeared. So now the show is given the appearance that although Judith is not Rick's child, and that was established in the flashback scene with him and Shane, that that is Shane's child. It gives the appearance now that they're going to focus the show. A lot of people were up in the air and not happy with the rumors that were going around that the show was going to focus, that Daryl was going to be Norman Reedus, Daryl, was going to become the leader of the group. And it doesn't look like that. It looks like now they're shifting the story to Judith Grimes, which I think, like I said, now because Carl is gone, Rick is gone, I think it's befitting because now, although it's not exactly like the comics, it still can be played in that manner because it's still a Grimes child. It's not you know, some random person getting more storyline. It's not Daryl getting Call story or Enid getting Call story or even Henry getting Call story. It's actually somebody is connected still with the Grimes family that will be carrying on Call story. And I think a lot of people will be very happy with where the show is going. Once again, it is Daphne Matthew from Talking the Dead. You also know her from the Walking Dead fan base. 
If you get a chance, join either of those groups today. She does a lot of watch events on her Facebook group, Talking the Dead. So you got to join her today and catch in on all the fun. Plus, you know, every now and then they talk about everything going on with The Walking Dead. Okay, they talk a lot about The Walking Dead. Obviously, the name says it all. We give spoilers. <laughs> yes, yes. Now and then, yes, you do give spoilers, but they do control it very well as far as when and how yes. they, they leave forums where people can go ahead and talk about the spoilers that other fans haven't seen it yet, especially on the days it airs, because we all know about the different time zones and also how, when it airs in which country, when and whatnot. So they're very respectful of that, whether it's the Walking Dead fan base or Talking the Dead as well. My friend, you are the most devoted fan I know to the Walking Dead universe. <laughs> Before we head on out on The Walking Dead and its future on what you want to see as far as the shows, all the different stuff that's going on. There's a video game that's coming out as well by Overkill that's been totally overlooked and I thought has come out at the wrong time. So I'm not sure about its success going forward. That to me is, is something that even if it does rate highly is still kind of disappointing that it just it's going to fly under the radar with all the big games that are coming out. But that aside, there's so much to talk about when it comes to the Walking Dead universe. Your final thoughts on what you would like to see as far as the Walking Dead universe is concerned. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to the remainder of the season and how they handle it. Like I said, they shifted the storyline, which, you know, as odd as it may seem, may have actually saved the show because there were a lot of people who lost interest in the show because they said, it was too close to the comics. So now they've made this big shift. They lost Rick Grimes, and that wasn't their doing. That was his own decision to do. But you have to respect the actor. I mean, this is a man who dedicated nine years of his life to a show. So he made that decision. And the one thing I say to all the fans and all the groups that I participate in is that don't be angry. Be disappointed. But... You have to respect a person's desire to be in their children's life, be a husband, be a father, you know, not wanting to uproot them eight months out of the year to film a show. These people, these actors, these wonderful, amazing actors who do this show and have been doing it for eight or nine years do not owe anybody anything. I am looking forward to Sunday and every Sunday after that until, <laughs> I don't know, one of the little things that came out this week that kind of flew under everybody's radar is that the show will be up until season 12, as far as I know. There will be 12 seasons of The Walking Dead. They have signed Norman Reedus and Melissa McBride, Carol and Daryl, respectively, for those who don't know their real names. They've both been signed to three-year deals. But we've also Go talked... Ahead more about Denai Guerrera. She needs to be paid top dollar because she is a hot commodity right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Denai. I've met her in person. She's awesome. The thing is, is that they signed Melissa and Norman because I guess they were the ones that were the easiest to negotiate with. Inside of information is that they're hoping to sign Denai to a better, bigger deal. But again, you just said it. She's in the Marvel universe. Who's going to say no to Marvel and the opportunities available to her. She was in two blockbuster movies this year alone that were part of the Marvel Universe. So who's going to say no to that? But I tell you what, there's so much to look forward to with The Walking Dead, the entire universe. Even though the video game side has had some issues with, what, like I said, Overkill and also with the death of Telltale Games, but there's still a lot to look yeah. forward to when it comes to the television shows, the movies and whatnot. Also, even the comic itself. The comics are still going strong. Robert Kirkman, he hasn't been really present and communicating much since he announced in July that it was confirmed that Andrew Lincoln was leaving. The comics, as far as I know, he has no plans to stop them. He wants to see it go to 400 issues. And right now, I think issue 187 just came out. So he still has a lot of story out there he wants to tell. But I'm hoping that people stay tuned. I'm sure that they will be satisfied with what happens the rest of the season because I'm going to pitch it out there. The Whisper Rus is something that should not be missed. You have to experience it on the show. Once again, it is Daphne Matthew from Talking the Dead and also 
the Walking Dead fan base Facebook groups. Join those awesome groups today to talk everything Walking Dead. Plus, I hear every now and then she loves to talk about other pop culture stuff as well. Daphne, it's been great having you aboard, talking about, once again, everything going on with The Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead, the new movies coming up for Andrew Lincoln, and so much more. Just always a pleasure to have you on the show, part of the broadcast, and of course, right here on the Pop Culture Cosmos. If you're tired of sifting through flea markets for rare and unique games, we can help. Retro City Games in Henderson, Nevada, only five minutes from the Las Vegas Strip, has all your favorite gaming staples, classics, and a wide selection of rare games with new stuff always appearing on our shelves. Come in and chat with Nicole or Doug about your love of games and watch as they help you complete your collection or find your childhood favorite. And don't forget, Retro City Games loves trade-ins. So if you have any Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Xbox, PlayStation, or even PC games, come in and visit Retro City Games today. Welcome to the new metropolis of gaming, Retro City Games. And we're back to close out the show. This is the Pop Culture Cosmos. And we want to welcome our newest radio station, that is Pulse Talk Radio. Welcome to the Pop Culture Cosmos family. So great to have your listeners out there. Hope you will enjoy everything we talk about on a weekly basis here on the Pop Culture Cosmos, the PC Multiverse at Pulse Talk Radio. We've got a radio listing of all of our stations that we're on because we're being played seven days a week around the world. And that's going to be at Pop Culture Cosmos on Facebook. Or it also tells you, if you want to download the show, some of our podcast networks as well. You've got a great thing going on with Humanic Media, so share the goods, my friend. What's going on with your awesome experience known as Humanic Media? Just topic apocalypse. So yeah, we put out a new episode yesterday about do nothings in the workplace. And we've all, let's be honest, we've all worked with people who do nothing, right? And they don't lose their jobs. But when the boss is around, they act like they do a lot or they'll even like go as far as to take credit for what somebody else has done. So Big Dog brought that up and we talk about that and we talk about education and how to get a job. And we're joined by Louis Vasquez of Vasquez and Family Incorporated. And you know, he tells us about what employers think when they're hiring people. So it's definitely a good episode. Check it out. It's out there today. There'll be a new one going up on Tuesday when we're talking about religion. So that'll be interesting. But yeah, that's all we got going on for right now. And also check out our home site, popculturecosmos.com, where you can get all that great humanity media stuff, all the great articles, podcasts, and so much more at popculturecosmos.com, whether it's Pop Culture Cosmos, Game Source, or Humanica Media. My friend, as we head on out on another great show, I want to thank so much Daphne Matthew from Talking the Dead and the Walking Dead fan base Facebook groups. So glad to have her here as always, Talking the Walking Dead. And our good friend, Tyler Baker from the Fantasy Football Pater Podcast. Check out his full episodes on our Pop Culture Cosmos channel on Podbean, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts and so many other podcast outlets. Before we head on out, your thoughts on Rocket League what a success story, man, because I first heard about it back, or what, a couple years ago when they were a free game on the PlayStation Plus. I snatched that up in a hurry, my friend, and I do not regret it all. It's been a fun game to go back to every now and then, but it has transitioned itself into such a popular game after its run as a free game. It just spread the word out on how good a quality game this is. People have been buying it at full retail now for quite a spell to the point where they're getting all the DLC and all that other stuff. And it's become such a success story in the video game marketplace. They're now been a big time game that's being watched on streaming networks as far as Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and what have you. And this past weekend, the world championships, which resulted in a high viewer count on Twitch and just a whole lot of fun. Your thoughts on Rocket League, this small game success story, which has turned out to be a big, huge success story in the video game marketplace. So when it first came out, I played it. I loved it. But then I I got too busy. And by the time I came back to it, everyone I was playing with was infinitely better than I was. And it's one of those games where like you either learn really fast 
or you just get left behind. So I stopped playing it. You know, I realized maybe that's not for me, but anyone can play it. And it's weird because there was a study showing that kids under the age of 10 were a lot better at Rocket League than people 18 and over. And just because their minds were able to process what was going on the, on the screen a lot faster than what an adult could and uh, react to it on the controller. So that's cool. But I got friends who love it, and I see why. And it's it's a cool game. It's an it's an amazing concept. But where do you stand on it? Think of it like like a sports game that you just go ahead play a few games. Psionics, the developer, has done a great job with promoting this game, with making this game something special. And I'm so happy for the success because it is showing that in the video game marketplace, every now and then. There is a little engine that could, and this is the version of that because they are the game that came out of nowhere and became a major success story in a sea of nothing but big AAA, heavily advertised games that are trying to compete against it. Somehow, here's this little game that not only beaten expectations, but beaten it by a wide, wide margin. So for Josh Peterson, this is Gerald Glassford. It's another beautiful day in paradise right here in the pop culture cosmos. We thank you for listening. And here's hoping you have yourself a great day. Okay, let's talk about the Flopcast. Where every week we drink a lot of coffee and we talk about comic books, movies, conventions, music, Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, don't forget the coffee. Lots of weird, obscure pop culture stuff from the 70s and 80s. And chickens. Yeah, chickens. This will be the stupidest half hour of your week. We guarantee it. You can find us on the ESO Network. And... Flopcast.net. You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network. Your station for all things geek. Tangent Bound Network. Let your voice be heard. Tangentboundnetwork.com Thanks so much for downloading the Pop Culture Cosmos and stay tuned as more great podcasts are on the way. Thanks again for listening to us here at the Pop Culture Cosmos.